we are starting from seated today. I like your outfit, Katie. Thank you. It's this company called Woven Threads, and they uh -huh. have like all sorts of cute little sets, and they just released their new collection, and I, re I really want it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is adorable. Look at that. Oh, on it. <laughs> like the new the new sets have like, they've got like bell bottoms and they instead of like having just a band, they do like a little V in the front. It's really flattering for people who are hippie. Like uh it kind of makes your waist look even smaller. So I really want them, but you know, I don't I don't need to drop like 150 bucks on a yoga outfit right now. Are you going to work today? I do. So we started our floor sets yesterday. So I'm going in today after this from like 12 to 5. And then I go, we open on Friday. And I'll, I'll go in on Saturday. Um, which is kind of nice to be done having like all of our calls all throughout the day. Because I can actually like do stuff like dirt again because we have them on Mondays they're at like 10, 12, 1 30, 3 30, which is yeah. just right to not be able to like do anything, do anything right. else. You want to take the hit class, <laughs> 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 which I really need right now. But uh, and then Tuesdays through Fridays it was 12, 1 30, and then again at 3 30. So again, it's kind of nice to not have to like just sit around and listen to Zoom calls all day. Um, and to just like, like I was telling before you got on the phone, um, I'm, I'm either going to be promoted into the visual store manager position at our store, or we are opening a new bridal line and it's called Valve, and that's gonna go into Warehouse Row, and I would be sent to be the assistant manager to open that store. Very cool. So it, right now, when they're like, hey, do you wanna work? I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> like, until we sign that paperwork, I'm a brown noser right now. <laughs> do you have a preference which job you would prefer? I would honestly prefer the one at our shop now just because it, I know that it's, it's with convenience. I can create, well, I can well, I can it for a slightly higher pay. Oh. I have a master's and it's a high volume, high performing store. Whereas Val, because we are just opening the line and we know we're about to go into recession, they're right. having that salary out at, um, like at 40. And like I said, I know that if I stay in the shop, I have the potential to go just right. this position, this position, make it up to 50. And then, you know, so there's just more financial and then future. I feel honestly, I feel like future possibilities with altered state, just because it is more established than Val. Right. right. Plus that, like that, that location Warehouse Road doesn't see a whole lot of foot traffic. I, I don't know. They, they like struggle. That. Their businesses struggle there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And they're supposed to be a low volume store because they're going to be like appointment only. They're going to run like a bridal boutique. So, um, no. like just because they anticipate it being a low volume and different formatted store, they're just, and it's in the beginning of a brand, there's just not quite as much like. They don't know what's happening with it yet so i'm sure they're like you know if it survives this next year or two right there'll be like expansion in it and more mobility available but especially with all the day, we're only 45 right. minutes away from home office really there's sure. ability to go corporate there and like yeah. Yeah. even get out of shops altogether um and you know like i said since i know i'm up for a promotion and the oil industry has tanked really good idea for me to stay in the place that I can grow the most. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yeah. Especially, like I said, to give Cole some time to, like, really figure out what what direction he's moving in, since he knows that, like, we just can't wait for the oil industry to bounce back, you know. There's no, no telling when that will be, especially with Russia and Saudi Arabia just pumping stuff out of the ground, like, 
people are buying oil when we know they're not. <laughs> um, but like I said, this cool. He's, I'm, like I said, I'm really hoping that he chooses to come off the road and be home more. Um, so I also want him to feel like my job is stable enough that he has that time to think. Yep. Um, especially as he provided that time for me in between Brainerd and like trying to figure out everything throughout the past like six months. So I feel like as his wife, I should do the same. <laughs> time to, I call that paying the check. Time to pay the check. Yeah. <laughs> Your turn. Yep. And I am okay with it. Like he's, and his brother works in a, at a moving company. So also like while he's not officially working for Mistross or a moving company, he's making pretty good cash under the table every day. So yeah. Yeah. That's not much. It's not all, it's not all bad. You know, but we are going to start from seated. So finding whatever comfortable position works for you guys. And just taking the first couple moments to start moving into your breath. So maybe you take a second to close the eyes. Maybe you just soften the gaze. And in that next breath, we're just going to take the right hand down towards the mat and start reaching over with the left. You might need to bend that right elbow if the side body is super long. And in that next breath, we're just going to come all the way up and over. Maybe you want to really open out. Maybe that collapsing feeling feels good. You never know where the stretch is going to feel. Nice, at the very beginning of your practice. We're coming back towards center. And then we're just going to take that right hand behind you, left knee, left hand to the right knee. Inhaling for a leap. Exhaling as you twist. And that next breath, we're just going to take it all the way to the other side. So grabbing that twist towards the left. And then from here, we're coming back to center. We're sort of roll over the knees, passing through a quick tabletop. Maybe you have to take some cat cow here. It's releasing the spine. Maybe there's different movement that you need. And in that, that comes. Breath, <laughs> yeah. In that next breath, we're gonna take the right leg out. It's like you knew we were gonna start playing around with balance. And just holding that leg in space. If you feel good here, you're gonna reach that right arm straight out. Really trying to start firing up that low core to keep the body as parallel or as parallel to the mat as possible. That's right leg and right arm. Yep. <laughs> Very hard to do. Yes, it is. My left leg, when I first started like really trying to find the balance there, I would flare my left leg out just a little bit so that you had that asymmetry. Oh. And, like all of a sudden you're like real low core, like down in your Mula Banda area sort of clicks in and you know how to get it. But we're gonna take that leg out towards the right. Flex the foot, holding it in space for just a quick moment. And then we're going to step it to the outside of the right hand. So from here, you might rock back and forth just to find some movement in the hips. And when you're ready, we're going to twist those to or turn the toes out like you were having like a warrior foot-ish or like towards the top right corner. The right hand grounds in front. We're just going to open out again.
And then as you exhale, hand comes back down towards the mat. You're going to kick back, really taking a moment to enjoy, uh, or not, just depends on how your hamstrings are feeling today, a half split. You're going to rock back forward. You're going to plant the hands, and then that left foot hops up, and you find yourself in a quick malasana. Nice. Fifth breath, hands come to the mat. We're going to make our way back to your tabletop. If the spine's feeling any kind of wonky, feel free to pass through some cat-cow. And then we've got, we're going to try to again get that, that balance with that real deep core activation. Maybe you kick the right leg out towards that back right or split, flare it out like we would do for a side plank or something. Towards that left back right corner of the mat, the left leg lifts. I always try to go ahead and engage here before I even lift my arm because I know that if I'm not already like contract it, I'm gonna fall open. So that I lift the leg, engage, and then lift the hand. Nice. And then your fifth breath, we're gonna take the leg out, the hand's gonna return towards the mat. We're not trying to do that type of crazy balance yet. and then stepping to the outside of that left hand. You might keep the toes forward. You might spin them out just a little bit. Just depends on how open or deep you want to get into the hips. And then we're going to start to roll open. And in that fifth breath, we're coming back down. We're gonna hop back forward into that malasana again. Maybe this time you really press through the elbows to open the hips. Nice. And then from here, we're gonna see if we can't come up onto the tiptoes. Nice. We're gonna pretend like we're in a hot yoga class, engage the low core, and see if you can't make your way all the way back towards standing. Nice. Oh. <laughs> Heels lower. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, moving into the fold of your choice. Maybe you're a dangly ragdoll. Maybe you're bound. And as you inhale, arms are coming up overhead. Exhale, hands are we're coming into heart center. We're going to start to move through a couple of sun A's. So the arms rise. Exhale as you fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhaling through plank and chaturanga. Inhaling into your up dog or cobra. Exhaling back to down dog. And you've got your breaths here. So maybe you move, maybe you're static. Now with that next exhale, you're gonna make your way to the hands, walking or hopping, inhaling into that flat back, exhaling into your fold, inhaling arms come up overhead, Exhale, hands are coming into our center. Second sun A, arms are taking it up. Exhaling into that fold. Inhale, flat back. And then making your way right back through that plank and chaturanga. Inhaling into your up dog or cobra. Taking it back to down dog. And again, choosing whether or not you need movement or stillness here. Then that next breath, whatever your favorite method is, we're taking it to the hands. Finding your flat back. Exhaling into your fold. 
Inhaling, the arms are coming up. Exhale, they're coming into heart center. Last traditional A, we're going to take it up. Move to the mat. Inhaling, flat back. Exhaling to start through your vinyasa. Find your back then. Maybe you land back in down dog. Maybe you're landing in a child's pose. And in that next breath, we're just going to take it towards the hands. Inhaling into your flat back. Exhaling into your fold. With that next breath, you're going to bend at the knees. Inhaling to rise into your chair. In that next breath, let's see if we can't find our chair on our tiptoes. You might find that you're able to sink down just a little farther. And let's try to leave that right foot right where it is. Step back into your crescent. The front heel will drop. Nice. And then we're going to twist on and open into your warrior two. From warrior two, we're going to drop on back into a reverse. And then you're coming out wide. Hands are coming in together. This left elbow is coming to the top of your right knee. The back foot might stay grounded. You might pop onto the back toes. Whatever makes your revolve side angle feel more comfortable. Then that next breath, we're going to try to keep our elbow right where it is, but we're bringing the left foot back to the right foot. You're finding your chair in a twist. Nice. Then as you exhale, you're just going to untwist, finding your forward fold. Inhaling into your flat back. And then whenever you're ready, we're gonna move through that vinyasa. So finding your plank, your chaturanga, you can always skip it. You can always edit it to whatever you're feeling today. And in that next breath, we're making our way back to the hands. Inhaling into your flat back. Exhaling into that fold. With your next breath, the knees bend. Arms sweep up, finding your chair. Now we're just going to pop on. We're at least going to take the right toes onto the tippy toes. And then you're going to step back into your crescent. You might come up on tippy toes on both sides, but we're not going to spend 10 breaths in chair again. <laughs> As you exhale, warrior two. And then dropping on back into your reverse. We're going to come back four, let the hands come in together, right elbows coming across the body to the left knee. Maybe you come onto the back toes, maybe you keep the foot grounded as you find your revolved side angle. In your fifth breath, we're going to see if we can get that right foot back to the top of your mat. 
so that you're in that twisted chair. And that next breath, just untwist into your forward fold. Find your flat back, and then we're gonna make our way through a vinyasa. So finding your plank, chaturanga, dog cobra, back to down dog. Maybe you pedal it out here, maybe you feel good in stillness. Then we're gonna go ahead and take that right leg up, circle the legs, stack the hips, just find some movement. In that next breath, we're just gonna take the right knee up to the nose. We're gonna hold it for five breaths, so really pressing through those hands, the back left toes. And in that next breath, we're just gonna go ahead and step it through the hands. You're gonna let the back heel drop in, finding your warrior one. Trying to really twist that left shoulder forward. And for warrior one, we're gonna take the hands, clasping them behind the back. Inhale for your leap. Exhaling into a humble warrior. Then your fifth breath, we're gonna keep the torso low as you take the left hand right to the inside of the right foot. Start twisting open. We're going to come all the way onto those back left toes this time. So from here, we're going to hop the left hand in front of and diagonal to that right foot. So you're just moving the left hand forward first. And then you're going to start to transfer your weight into the left hand and right foot and come up into your revolved half move. Nice. So you might stay here. You might bend that back knee and see if you can reach back and grab the foot. As you exhale, we're going to find that revolved half moon, regardless of whatever you did. From here, you're going to engage the core to see if you can bring the back left knee up into a high knee. Nice, nice control. And then from your high knee, we're gonna to start to take it to warrior three. Nice. And from warrior three, we're gonna go ahead and dive the hands all the way to the mat. Really worrying more about our fold than the kick in your left leg into your standing splits. Then your fifth breath, we're just gonna ground that left foot at the back of the mat. Right foot's gonna meet it, and we're just gonna make our way through to the left. So finding whatever your vinyasa is or is not at the moment. Back to down dog for a few breaths here. And then that left leg comes up, giving yourself a couple of breaths to just find some movement in that hip. And then that fifth breath, we're just bringing the knee towards the nose. We're going to crunch in, holding it for five breaths. And then stepping through into your warrior one. And I'm going to square the shoulders. 
hips will never perfectly square because that back foot is stepped out. But we're still thinking about trying to square them. And then we're taking it into our humbles and the hands are coming behind the back. Rolling the shoulders open, finding some length, starting to fold. At the bottom of our fifth breath, we're moving into our firefly twist. So the right hand's coming as close as you feel comfortable into that left foot. You're rolling open, back coming onto the back right toes. In our fifth breath, we're gonna start to set up for that revolve half moon. So we're starting to shimmy the, or move that right hand forward and diagonal to the big toe. Starting to maybe rock back and forth just to feel the transfer of your weight. Then you're gonna step on up into your revolved half move. And you might stay here. You might find that bind. For our evolved half moon, we're gonna release into the traditional variation. And then start to train, train up. Uh, start to move into your high knees. So hands are yogi's choice, however, to get there. It might be one fluid movement. You might wobble along the way, it's all totally fine. We're gonna take that high knee for a couple more breaths. Opening out to find your tree. Arms are yogi's choice. And from here, we bring that knee back forward. Start to find your warrior three. Nice. Now we're gonna dive down and fold into our standing splits. In our fifth breath, we're gonna make our way to plank, start to move through your vinyasa. Inhaling into your dog or cobra. As you exhale, we're gonna take it back to a child's pose. Hallelujah. <laughs> and maybe you have the fingers tinted here. Maybe the arms are forward or back. Maybe it's a wide leg, whatever feels good today. And then whenever you're ready, we're just gonna kind of walk the hands back, finding our way onto the knees. And then from here, we're gonna just start to take the hands, planting them back behind the feet. So we're starting to move into kind of like the hero pose variation. We're just gonna spend five breaths here, letting the knees open. Then in that next breath, as you exhale, you're gonna to start to lift the hips. So you're almost finding like a camel bow variation. The head may or may not drop back. This feel, it depends on what feels good in your neck today. Then that fifth breath, the hips lower. You're gonna come back up, come all the way over into a closed knee child's pose with the arms behind you. And in that next breath, we're making our way back up. We're gonna come on to, up onto the knees, separate them about hip distance apart, 
And we're going to take your favorite expression. Uh, actually, we're going to do half cannibals because those are really nice back bends. So as you inhale, the right arm comes up and it sweeps back to grab that right foot. And then the left arm lifts. You can really pull forward through the hips. If you can press through the hand, reach through the opposite one. It also has a tendency to make you just a little less dizzy than a full camel. Maybe you need to circle that arm. Then that next breath, we're just going to take it on over towards the other side. In our fifth breath, we're going to come on back to a tabletop. Move through some cat cow. And in your next breath, we're going to tuck the toes. We're going to hover the knees three inches off of your mat. Then as you exhale, press up and back into your down dog. With that next exhale, we're going to come back down into that tabletop hover. We're going to go back up into your down dog. And last tabletop hover. So coming down, really engaging through the core, hovering the knees. With that exhale, we're going to take it right back up to your down dog. We're going to take that right leg up, start to open that knee, doing circles, stacking the hips. And whenever you're ready, you're going to go ahead and flip your dog. Whenever you're ready. We'll take it back to your three-pointed. And then step on through. So from here, we're going to keep the hands grounded and just pull forward through that right knee. And your next breath, we're going to try to keep the feet kind of how they are. Bring the hands coming up so you're balancing just a little bit. And then we're going to spin around into your Skandasana. Nice. So from your Skandasana, we're just going to let the hands come onto the mat. We're going to do a couple ninja lunges just to find some movement there. All right, so the next time you are on your lunge side, we're gonna stop here. We're gonna plant both hands to the inside of that foot. So you might stay here and just open. You might find that you're able to kick that, oh! <laughs> Good girl. It really helps if you have a mat there instead of hardwoods. <laughs> that was not supposed to be a split. That was supposed to be the falling star guy. But it was impressive. <laughs> it was a surprise. And after you've got that hip opener, we'll come back to whatever variation we are in there. We're going to pivot both sets of toes towards the front of your mat. The hands might just walk. You might readjust the feet, but we're going to find a wide leg or fold or a crow, or a tripod, whatever's calling your name today. And 
In that next breath, you're gonna inhale into your flat back. And we're just gonna let the left hand come towards the mat, pressing through it, twisting the torso towards the right. And then we're gonna switch it on up. We're just taking the opposite hand up, opposite one down, finding your twist. And in that next breath, we're gonna bring both hands towards the mat. We're just gonna crawl back on around towards the top. So you're back in that low lunge. So from here, we're gonna keep the left toe grounded. You're gonna shoot the right foot back, but you're gonna let it hover. Now we've got five breaths in. We're gonna do five elbow taps. We're just gonna bring it up to the right knee. Big right elbow, shoot it back. One, two, three, four. And after that fifth one, you might keep hovering the foot. You might let it come to the mat as you move through your vinyasa. Ooh, and take it back to your down dog. And we've got a couple breaths here. So maybe you pedal the heels out. Maybe you just rest. We've got the next side, and we should be coming towards the tail end of some of these, these little flows. So the right leg's coming up. The left leg just getting used to the right. You're going to open that hip whenever you're ready. Flip the dog. In that next breath, we'll just find our way back to our three pointed. And whenever you're ready, we're just going to step that left foot in between the hands. We really pull forward through that knee so that we find the release through the right, the front of the right hip. And then from here, we're going to try to come onto the tiptoes, let the hands come into heart center, or whatever way it makes it easier for you to transfer back into that standoff snap. Nice. The toes on the left might be pointed towards the ceiling. They might be down at the mat. In that next breath, we're going to find like a couple lunges. And whenever you make it back towards your lunge side. We've got that left hand grounded. So you might just be opening here. You might find that you can start shifting that foot, that left foot forward and find your fall and star. And in that fifth breath, we'll just take both hands towards the mat, shimmy our foot back to wherever we need it. And then we're coming forward, twisting the toes around. Ooh. And again, whatever forward fold and or inversion calls your name here. And before we go through our vinyasa and do that little bit of plank work, we're really going to ground through the feet, rolling all the way back up. The hands are going to come behind the back, grabbing opposite elbows or moving into prayer hands. We're going to heel toe the feet together so they're about a leg distance apart. And so that we end up at the top of our mat, we're going to go to the back first. So both sets of toes flip around towards the back side of your mat. We're moving towards pyramid. You guys know exactly what that is. You're squaring your hips. Inhale for some length. Exhale as you start to roll or fold down. And 
when you're ready, we're inhaling up, really pressing through that. The feet trying to use the core to support you. We're gonna shift through center. Then take it all the way to the front of your back. It's totally fine if those feet need to readjust. Some people can twist on the line, some people gotta fix it up at the end. We're gonna reset our hands, inhale for length. Exhale into your pyramid. In that fifth breath, we'll just keep the torso low. We'll go ahead and release the hands towards the mat. The right foot might reach out. You're shooting the left foot back. You're hovering the heel in space in that plank. Then you've got your left elbow tapped. Only five of them. So left knee, left elbow, back, two, three, four, and after your fifth one, you'll kick it back. You might cover the foot. You might go ahead and release as you move through a vinyasa. We're going to take this one back to a child's. And in that fifth breath, we're just going to come on back up. We're going to swing the legs around front. And then start to make our way into our chosen four fold. So as you inhale, arms come up. Peace fingers might bind on the big toes. You might bind around the feet. The knees might be bent. The gaze might be forward towards the toes. You might just go ahead and look down towards the mat. Inhaling to make your way up. From here, we are going to take the right leg out just a little bit wide, so towards the corner, the top right corner of your mat. Maybe wider, just depends on how far you feel like going laterally. But we're gonna take that left foot to the inside of the right thigh. Inhale as the arms come up. Then you're gonna twist towards the toes before you fold. And you're really trying to think about twisting the left shoulder down so the shoulders are level. Inhaling to make your way back up. We're going to take this right arm, set it to the inside or on top of the right leg. Start first by rolling the left shoulder open, then reaching. Maybe you can take the gaze towards the ceiling. Inhaling to make your way up. We're gonna shift the left foot out just a hair. Let the right foot come find it. Inhale for your length. Exhale to fold into your Baddha Konasana or your butterfly. As you inhale, you're gonna make your way up. We're going to take those peace fingers, bind them on the big toes. Go ahead and draw the navel towards the spine so the low core is starting to be engaged, checking out that Mula Bandha. You're going to rock back onto the sitting bones. You can hover here. This is still getting into the low core. You might come here. You might extend all the way out. Regardless of where you are here, we are going to extend those legs. Try to rock back, tap, rock forward, and then catch yourself in space. Nice. You catch. Next breath, feet are going to come together, and you're going to try to use your core to slowly lower back down to that Baddha 
Asana. Nice. That kitty is lucky he's not getting kicked. She looks like looks like it's in the danger zone. <laughs> then the left leg comes out, the right foot shimmies, inhaling arms are coming up. We're twisting towards the toes and then folding. Inhaling, we're going to make our way back up. We're going to take this left leg, left arm, coming inside or on top of left leg, starting first to roll the right shoulder open, and then reaching. From here, we're coming back towards center, and we're going to shift that right foot out. Let the left foot come to find it. From here, we're going to go ahead and maybe you bind on the big toes, maybe you just grab the ankles. We're going to go immediately back here where we were, finding your hover. And then you're going to bring the knees in together. Nice. Maybe the hands come here, maybe they come out. Maybe you send your legs into your boat or your Navasana. And from here, we're going to cross the ankles, bring them into the chest. Just give yourself a quick squeeze. You're going to extend back out into your variation of both. We're going to take the opposite leg across. Hug in again. Last five breaths in your boat. So finding whatever expression you want. Maybe you choose to take a canoe instead. And then as you're ready, we're going to bring the legs down, arms up, and then find your pole. Whatever fold feels good, we're trying to release that low back a little. From here, we're going to come back up. We're going to take that right, left leg, let it come out, stack the right knee on top, and or just take a half lotus with the right knee on top. You might be able to stack knees and heel, knees and ankles or knees and heels, get the legs parallel. So you're already in a double pigeon or a fire logs pose. So from here, we're gonna take the right arm up and just patting yourself on the back. You might stay here. You might take that left arm up, having the palm towards the back. You might find that you're able to bind at the fingers. So you might stay here. You might take your cow face pose a little farther by folding, stopping wherever your shoulders tell you to, or hips or knees tell you to. It's a pretty big opener. From here, we're going to inhale up. We're going to release those arms. Maybe you need, yeah, find whatever movement that you need to. And then we're going to switch the leg. So the right leg is going under, left leg is stacking on top, taking just a couple breaths to adjust the feet. And then this time, left arm is patting you on the back, right arm is starting to reach up. And stopping wherever you need to. Maybe you're here. Maybe you start to fold. Next breath, we're coming back up. We're going to release that 
we're going to start to take the knees up, uncrossing them, windshield wipering up side to side for just a second. And then from here, we've got one, we're going to start moving into our back bends. We're going to go into our back bend through what is also a hip opener. So you might keep the feet in Baddha Konasana. You might have a full or half lotus. Whatever legs you choose, you're going to start to place the hands behind the hips to rock back onto the forearms. You're going to roll the shoulders open and the head goes back. You might be able to take it all the way back, but we're finding a fish. And after your next breath, we're going to make our way back up. If you went into a full lotus, feel free to release it. Maybe you're going to flip the feet. All we're going to do real quick is find a counter pose. So we're going to fold forward. We're going to reach forward and really tent the fingertips so that you're finding that long leap through your back. We're making our way back up and we are going to start to make our way onto the back. So we have gone through quite a few back bends already today, so we're only going to do one. Whatever your preference is, we've done camels, we did that weird fish, we did that like we had that modification in our balance. So again, maybe you want a full wheel just because your back feels fired up. Maybe you'd rather take a bridge um, just because your back is done bending. We're gonna be eight of our own breaths for both postures. Heels are close into the sitting bones and aligned with them. The bridge, palms are down by your side, press into the mat. Wheels, palms are up near the ears, with fingertips pointed back towards the shoulders. Both postures working with your breath, rising on either the inhale or exhale, whatever makes you feel more comfortable. And then when you find your rise, just checking in with the joints, stacking knees on top of ankles, kind of rolling in so you're not flaring out, and then just taking eight breaths, fast or slow, whatever is working for you. And after your eighth breath, releasing and finding a counter pose. So maybe it's windshield wiper knees. Maybe it's knees into the chest. Maybe it's legs up. Maybe it's a happy baby. If you took a legs up, you are already one step ahead of us as we make our way into our inversions. So maybe you continue with that legs up. If your legs weren't up, maybe you go there. Maybe you're rocking up and back into a shoulder stand. If you're in a shoulder stand, you know you always have the ability to play. Maybe you take a full, another maybe more full fledged or intense inversion. I just want to get 10 breaths here. So again, working as quickly or slowly as you would like. And then whenever you're ready, Making your way out, we'll plant the feet on the mat. We're going to go ahead and take the right foot, figure fouring it at the left knee, drawing those knees up and in. You can always stay here. You might clasp behind the left thigh, 
and pull just a little bit to find a deeper reclined pigeon. If you want to take it one step deeper, you're going to take the hands, let them grab onto that right leg so that they're holding it in space, and then the left leg extends. If you need more core, you're going to let that heel hover. If you just really want to feel that long length that you would feel if we were taking this from a more traditional perspective, letting the heel come all the way to the mat. And then when you're ready, you're going to take that left knee, take it back to its figure four, and then we're going to drop both sets of knees on over towards the left. So that right foot lands, the knee might stay turned up towards the ceiling. You might roll it into your body, and then you're going to take the gaze over towards the right. From here, we're going to bring those knees back towards center and switch those sides. So the right foot's grounding, left foot figure fours, drawing your reclined pigeon up and in, stopping anywhere that feels good for you along the way. So maybe you keep the legs together, maybe you offer support to the left side so that you can extend the right leg. You're going to bring that right knee up, reconnecting it with the left ankle, and take your twist towards the right. So that knee might stay up, it might roll in, it might be different between the two sides of what you needed to feel a nice twist in your stretch. The gaze is going to go long over the left fingertips. In that next breath, we're bringing it back towards center, drawing the knees in so you're a nice little ball. Maybe you rock side to side, maybe you make some knee circles, just releasing any sort of tension in the spine. And then we're going to let both feet come towards the mat. We're going to move into a more traditional twist. So the arms are coming out wide into your teeth. You're going to drop over towards the right. The gaze goes towards the left. You're not too worried about whether the knees stack, but we're really going to try to ground that left and right shoulder blades to the mat. So really, it kind of takes that twist just a little bit higher up in your rib cage and allows us to make maybe create some more flexibility. We're going to come back towards center, take it on over towards the left, and again, we're not too worried about whether or not the knees are stacked. We just really want to focus on trying to keep both of those elbows, the shoulder blades grounded, and really reaching through the fingertips on the right side, taking that gaze long. Again, we're kind of moving our twist just a little bit higher up in the rib cage. And then when you're ready, we're coming back towards center. First, we'll let the legs come long really quickly. And then we'll take the right knee up, 
finding whatever variation of wind or moving pose feels good for you. Some people like to let the feet dangle so they can find movement in the ankles. Some people like to flex. Some people like to pull really hard on that right knee. And we're just going to switch those sides again. So the right leg coming out. Taking a couple moments to take to draw that left leg into whatever wind or moving pose is feeling good for you. And then once again, we're going to release the legs long, reach overhead for one full body stretch. So really finding that loop from fingertips to toes. And then that next breath, we're going to interlace all the fingers, leaving except for the pointer finger, leaving those guys extended. You're going to draw the legs in together. And then you're just going to start to take the torso as far over to the right as you can before you start getting to your leader back. So we want to stay as flat as we can in our banana asana. We're going to come back towards center. Inhale, finding some length through those fingertips. Exhaling, you can take it as far over to the left as you can before the back starts doing crazy little bows. Maybe you take the gaze towards the right, giving you a nice stretch in the neck. Coming back towards center. I'm going to draw the knees into the chest. Maybe you rock side to side. Maybe you do some knee circles. Maybe there's some other additional movements that you need to find to round out your practice. But in those next few breaths, we're going to start to make our way towards our Shavasana. As you start to move into that Shavasana, maybe you make a couple mental notes of where your wiggles are residing. You go ahead and kind of wiggle those guys out. Maybe you return to your breath and focus on that. If you set an intention, we're calling that one more time. And any of these little things will help settle the mind back into that moment where it's ready to be quiet.
with those next couple breaths, the small movements start making their way back to the body. Starting in the fingers, toes, wrists, ankles. Maybe you take a full body stretch. Maybe you like rolling to one side. But starting to make your way back towards seated. And starting to inhale, bringing the arms up. Exhale, hands come into heart center. Thank you guys so much for being here again.